Good morning, good people. So I'd like for you to think about a time. Can I go in front of the speakers? We'll find out together. <laughs> We're good. So I'd like for you all to think about a time from the beginning of your time to this morning when you knew that you were in the presence of genius. Think about that moment, that person, that experience. Was it something that was made, something that was done, said? You just knew that you were in this presence of something extraordinary. Turn to your neighbor and tell him how you knew that that was a genius moment. How did you know? <laughs> now I'd like for you to turn to your other neighbor. What is genius anyway? How would you define it? How would you explain it in your best smarty pants academic way? What is genius? Thank you. How many of you find that you are still in the middle of a sentence trying to describe and explain what genius is? Yeah. So you kind of know what it is mostly because there's some definition and you academically, because you are smarty pants, you're here Friday morning. You know what genius means, but I think I know what genius means. Here's where it gets good though. I want you to settle in. I want you to think of when you experienced genius in yourself. Are they flashes? You're like, no, 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 I woke up like genius. Is, or is that how you live, right? So when, do, when have you experienced your own genius? I'm going to ask you to take a moment and sit with that. I invite you to ride that little voice that's saying, you've never had a genius moment. You're not a genius. I mean, you're, you're kind of bright sometimes, but you're not a genius. Or everything that falls out of my mouth is brilliant. What? And everything in the middle. How do you experience or compare or assign your own genius? And I'm watching the room, Earth space. I'm watching you shift, interestingly, but not surprisingly. I had a chance to ask a number of people just around me, hey, we're talking about today. By the way, so genius, what's your genius like? What? Um, can we go back to talking about this plan? Can we go back to work talking about dinner? My genius, that's uncomfortable. Because genius presumes and it asserts that you have a certain level of intellect, a certain level of charisma even, a certain level of something that we still haven't put a whole sentence to yet. And we are not conditioned, trained, invited to see those things in ourselves. And most often when I ask people about genius, when they saw it, when they experienced it, nine times out of 10, it was always in something else, someone else, somewhere else, somehow else, absolutely nothing to do with me. Because that genius business, that's for other people. And according to the definition, that's true. 1% of our population rate as geniuses if you go by IQ scores. So I don't know what that math is because I dropped those classes. That's like, what, three people in this space? I don't know with 1% of all the people here, right? Sputter. The dusks arranged into one rectangle were empty of other fourth graders. Just my teacher and me sitting in one of the long ends. I'd never struggled with school before, never stayed after for help. Math, fractions in particular, had decided to hate me. The F on my report card had been so foreign vulgar even. My teacher held the edge of my worksheet for a week as I graded the erasure across my mistakes. So many mistakes. I would pucker my lips to blow away the erasures but only mustered a slobbering sputter of tears. Drawing in a thin quivering breath, I would lift my pencil every day and hate math right back. So at fourth grade, and even to this day, being smart is one of the first things I'll tell you about myself. Whew, those fractions, though, made it really shaky. And I remember this moment, I remember this experience as full grown as I am, and it could still make me cry. 
I remember this feeling of sitting next to my teacher and I had to be one of the after school kids and the get help kids and I just can't get this math thing, kids. How am I gonna be smart? Because I was so super smart. How can I be super smart but I can't do fractions? How can I be super smart and can't? How can I be super smart? How can I? And it becomes something that you carry through your life, this perception of whether or not you feel you're a genius or gifted or talented or kind or beautiful, all these subjective words that we have been assigned and somewhere someone gave a definition to and we fell into that and that makes us question who we feel we are. And genius, again, this elusive, distant quality of other more brilliant people is much, much, much more super, super smart than you. I mean, you can't even do fractions, so how can you possibly be so smart? They didn't start studying genius until the 18th century, interestingly enough. So genius, in fact, came from the idea it was the same way we categorize flowers. That was the Latin, the, excuse me, the, the Latin root of genius initially. It wasn't until the 18th, started in the 16th century, the 18th century, they said, you know what, actually, people that know a lot of stuff and do a lot of stuff with those things they know, we're going to call them supernatural. So they even shifted the root of the word from genius and it came and went to of natural ability. Again, if you're not born with this math skill, with this dance skill, with this make things happen on the spot skill, does that mean that you can assign these things to yourself? And the answer we thought was no, because we have these tests, we have these IQ exams on how you rate genius. I'm gonna share one with you because Clip this with the book so I wouldn't fly everywhere. All right. One, your IQ is tested by your verbal intelligence, your mathematical ability, your spatial reasoning, your visual perception skills, classification skills, logical reasoning skills, and pattern recognition skills. So all of us in this space, 12 of you were to get together and you shook hands when you got here this morning. Okay? 12 of you. And then you're going to shake hands with those same 12 people before we leave. How many handshakes is that? I'll wait. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves, all right. Cooperate and graduate. 132, you're not gonna get it. The first person shook hands with 11 remaining people. The second person also shook hands with 11 people. But then you count 10 as a handshake with the first person has already been counted. Then you add nine for the third person, then on and on and on. So basically each hand, the 66 in the morning, 66 in the afternoon, 132. I wouldn't have gotten into college if I had to know these things. And this is also how we're scoring our IQ because we had to put a mathematical value to this thing that we knew that we couldn't understand. We had to find a way to test this thing that we couldn't assign to everyone. And this goes into our school systems. So we had um, a professor, Terman. He tracked gifted students for their lifetimes from the 40s into the 70s, adult lifetime, and tracked these genius children and how they did in life. And many became judges, many became scientists, many went on to do great things. But a couple of the ones that didn't actually score high enough to be followed were earned Nobel, pri Nobel Prizes later became professors later, contributed to our society later. But think about the students who didn't get selected by those numbers. Think about the student who just couldn't make their genius show up on their report cards. Think about the students who weren't able to translate how they saw the world when they interacted with their peers, with their family, walking through the world. And they go into their adulthood, walking through the world, thinking less of their capability. There's a difference between your intellect and your intelligence. Your intellect. Intellect to intelligence is like knowledge is to wisdom. Your intellect are the things that you collect, the things that you know, the trivia that you find, being able to do these, this stuff. And you power your brain with stuff. In our academic system, we are tested on how much stuff you can pack in your brain and then spit back out. But your intelligence is how you use that stuff. It's like the difference between watching a dancer and you can see them kind of counting. <laughs> Three, two, and they know the steps. They know the steps, but it's different from this. I don't dance either, but it's being willing to make a move with what you know. 
but we are not encouraged to be free flowing with the things that we already know because we've been told to just stack up things that we know. There's a really great story about this researcher when he was researching intelligence because we've only started really looking into that word, looking into that movement, looking into what genius could possibly mean. And he talked about how his mother was an MIT professor and his father was a law professor and he valued being brilliant. And at one point he realized just knowing stuff wasn't getting him what he needed in his world. So he talked about having the things you know being your resting state and how you apply those things you know as your acting state. You're deciding how to turn those dance moves into an actual choreography. You're not letting the part of you that's self-conscious about what you do and don't know, about how you present yourself to the world, about what folks are going to think. You trust that you know what you know, and you let the dots connect. Now, yes, the more things you pack in this brain, you have more dots to connect. And that's the other piece about genius that they missed initially, creativity. Genius, they realize, is as much about being able to pack in and manipulate and maneuver through information as it is about creating things that weren't there based on what you already know. How many of you feel you're already creative? Great group for the morning, absolutely. When I get to ask that of regular people, <laughs> a third of you would have raised your hands, because often we think creativity means that you are a dancer or a poet or a designer, that you create artistic things. That's being an artist. Creative means you're alive. It means you got up. It means your brain is functioning, because creating is putting together points, synapses that weren't connected before. That shortcut you got to get here, <laughs> yep. That outfit that shouldn't have put those patterns together. We have more stacked in our side of us. We have more capabilities that we have not been allowed to access because we've been distracted by terms and labels. Whether or not you are intelligent, whether or not you are creative, whether or not you are genius. Where's my card? OK, really quickly. Think of something that you know how to do well enough that you could teach somebody else. And that might be how to start a barbecue grill and get the coals just right. It might be how to put those outfits together. It could be fractions, something you know well enough to do that you can teach somebody else. Everybody have something in your mind? Is there any twist in that thing? Like I figured out that you want to solder it before you put it, otherwise it's going to, well, you know, I put cayenne pepper in mine because it's uh, or I found out you need to face it towards the sun, otherwise by the end of the day it will. Do you have any twists, chain? That's genius. Give yourself the permission to claim those moments when they happen. So we all have spikes of genius. People want to presume or we've been told that genius is a continuous state of brilliance. And I want to let you know, Albert Einstein didn't have genius scores. He was an average intellect, average in IQ score, just like most of us in this space. But he used the stuff that he knew and allowed his resting state to let his mind explore things that he didn't quite know yet. We're so afraid of going to places we don't know because it's going to show off the stuff that we don't know. Guess what, humans? You're not supposed to know everything. Guess what, humans? No one's expecting you to get it right every time. Guess what, humans? Part of your genius is knowing when you can invite other people into your space, other information into what you don't have, other connections and intelligences that aren't possibly your strength. So your genius is that you got up on a Friday morning to sit in a garden to listen to this woman talk about genius that you give yourself the opportunities to interact with humans you don't always interact with, that you give yourself the space to learn things and admit that you don't have it all figured out. That's why we get up every day to move forward in figuring this thing out. That's your genius. All right. Jump. My sugar babies are 18 to 24 years old. The GUI moniker might, be, might seem more appropriate for children, but my young adults prove most sticky, flexible, and naturally sweet once they're released from the corridors of high school and into the wild of real life. Driving three sugar babies from a grantor's meeting, swimming came up somehow. Our sw one swims, one swims a little, and the third has a theory that he can swim. I shared how leopard print Speedos rescued me one summer because I, too, had a theory. 
I hope they know they'll reach the edge more often than not. I hope to continue giving them reasons to jump in. Because it turns out, genius is an arbitrary set of numbers and statistics that some researchers put together because that's what researchers do. Much like how do you measure beauty, how do you value a soul, how do you weight friendship, genius, there's a place to start. And with the work we're able to do using creativity, using dots that don't always connect, and giving young people a space to roam inside those dots until they connect for them, then what they're able to do is walk into the world knowing that they don't know everything, but they know they have what it takes to figure out what they need to figure out what they need. That's genius. And in that space, they're able to explore and walk through the world knowing that they have capacity beyond measure. That's where you find your genius, when you know that it's already in there. You're already super smart. Maybe you can do math in your head. And I'd like to know how to keep the barbecue coals going. But know that every step you take, you're adding more to your life experience. And that's all we're here for. So your genius is knowing that you're connecting the dots. And your dots, the only ones you have to worry about is yesterday and tomorrow. Make today worth connecting. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs>